Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from CyberLab and today will be another video about TrueNAS Scale. This video will be part 7, where now we're gonna start to show how you can create your virtual machine and how you can use the virtualization from TrueNAS. In this way, you can create different virtual machines to use different operating systems according to your demand or your needs. And then now you're gonna ask, Alan, why I would like to create a virtual machine and why maybe it will be usable for me. I will give one example, I have lots of examples, but I will give one of those. Imagine that you want to run a, a web hosting. In this web hosting, you want to have some website, some application running online, but you want to isolate this system for your computer. What will happen? If you have directly run your TrueNAS and happen any hack attack, all your TrueNAS could be compromised. But if you're using a virtual machine, only that virtual machine could be compromised and that's because TrueNAS do snapshots, because TrueNAS have option to do backups and other things, you're gonna be safe and your data will be safe. So what you can do, you can stop your virtual machine without stop your TrueNAS and then restart this virtual machine or recover it in the point that you know that was safe to use. So this is what we're gonna try to show in this video. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel, and let's understand a little bit more about it. So before we start to show how you can create your virtual machine in your TrueNAS scale, we need to understand what we want to do. Our system have four cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM memory. Before you create anything, you need to look what kind of uh, usage of your virtual machine, and then you need to see if you're gonna fit your needs. Suppose that I want to install Windows, and Windows needed to have at least four cores, and that uh, I have only four cores total in my system. So this machine will not work as expected. And then I want to install two machines of Ubuntu. If I come here, Ubuntu requires at least a dual core, two gigabytes of uh, processor, two gigahertz, and four gigabytes of RAM memory. So I have here two cores. I will use two for one machine, two for another machine. I have no CPU available for my system. So you need to consider this one. Also, you need to look, you have 9.6 gigabytes free. If you start to put too much, RAM memory for all your virtual machines, your, run, your system will not run expected. So you need to increase the quantum of RAM memory. Other thing, in storage, I'm still using a virtual machine, but I create another storage. And this not other storage have 46 gigabytes because according from here, they require at least 25 gigabytes. So I want to have a little bit buffer in order to be able to install my Ubuntu. I don't need to install an SR on Ubuntu, I could install Debian, I could install any other operating system, but in this case I will install Ubuntu. Here in, the, here in this data set called VM data, I didn't define any permissions. So if I open here, I have uh, as a standard permissions. Because I don't want that no one go for that uh, specific location and start to delete things. I want that uh, they only have access if they required it, and only root will be able to do it. So. It's a balance that I did. Now, have everything understand, we can come here in our virtual machine. But before we start to click add a virtual machine, we need to download our operating system. I could initially install this Ubuntu, but I don't think that uh, will work well with uh, the setup that I have. It's low quantum of CPUs, run memory, and that will not uh, work and have a great experience. So in this way, I will come for Ubuntu server, and I will download Ubuntu server. When they still finish to the load, will take around 16 seconds, we can create a folder called ISO. This folder ISO will be locate all my virtual machines or my disk for my virtual machines. In this way, I can only direct all my ISOs to this location. So once that this one finish, just finish, so I can copy this information to my uh, location. So I can copy because one point something gigabyte, they'll take a few seconds, so in this middle way, I can come here in my virtual machine and start to configure it. First thing, before I put add a virtual machine, they already show 
available memory it's 8.75 gigabytes so i cannot use more than it and i need to be careful about it so i can come here and put add a virtual machine and i will decide which system that i use because i'm using linux will be linux name will be ubuntu description i can put uh, server local time it's only interesting for you to change it if you have a reason. Suppose that your computer is located, I don't know, in UK and you want to simulate that you are in Brazil. So you need to change this local time. Otherwise, I will keep it as a standard. Method of boot, I suggest you to leave UFI unless you have a really old system that don't support it. UFI is the new motherboard and that will work really well for most of the systems. Only if you have a real good reason, go for this one. Otherwise, keep UFI. Timeout, 9 seconds. Tape of display is when you start to show, simulate your machine. You can have a VCN or a Spice. In my view, VCN work much better, so we're going to leave it. If you like the other system, other display option, you can choose it. But let's leave, leave as a VNC. So now we can put next. Here, blind. Here, if you have a specific IP address that you want to define here, but in my case, I want to have a dynamic IP address only for this video. If you gonna install it, I suggest you to define your IP address and create as a static. But for me, it will work fine as a dynamic. So we put next, and here I define how many cores or CPUs that I want. In my case, I will leave one CPU, two cores and two threads, and that uh, I am using this capacity in my system. Customer CPU, if I have any other uh, mode that I want to use, in my case, it's totally fine. And if I want to define what kind of a CPU that I'm using. In my case, I'm not defining anything. So now I will define four gigabytes of RAM memory for my system. So we'll put 096 and I put next. Now is the size of the disk. I can create a new disk or can use a extended disk. In my case, I will create a new disk. I will leave this exactly same format or same disk tape. And here is the location. Because I create a VM as hard drive and this inside this one, I create a VM data as a data set. So I can use this one. The capacity of your system or your hard drive will be defined here. Remember, once that you define here, and you install your system will be a little bit more difficult to oversize. So it's better you already to define how much you need. In my case, I will leave as a 15 gigabytes and I put next. Now is the type of connection. If you put a VO, it will be only a internal network. Only with the internal network will access for this virtual machine. What's not interesting for me. So I'll put as an Intel and I will leave my MAC address and the external connection to the network. In this way, I will have an IP address for this machine and this machine will be accessible for the internet. If I wanted to open some ports for the internet, see this machine, I can do it. If I live in this option, I will not be able to do it. I only be able to run local in my TrueNAS. Depend of your application will be a good idea or depend of your application will be a really bad idea. So now I can put next and the installation or the ICO that I'm gonna use. In my case, I will use this one that was saving data, SO, you know, Ubuntu server. So I read select it. If you save another location or other program, you're gonna do exactly the same step, but you need to locate the correct file. So now I can put next. GPU, in my case, I don't have any GPU installed in this virtual machine, but if you have and you configure it to work with your TrueNAS, in this case, you can select this configuration and define your GPU. In my case, this GPU is not properly set up, so not work. So I will forget it. And also not install Plex, because if I want to install Plex, I will install directly my TrueNAS, not create a virtual machine for it. So now we'll put next, and they will give overview for all the information that I have. They will give the name of the system. They will give uh, how many cores, run, tape, and everything. So I can put save. Once that is saved, they appear this information where here you can start, you can modify, you can delete, you can check device, clone, or see the log. So let's start it. Once they start, if I put here display, 
they will appear the VCN where they allowed me to install and do all the configuration. This one will work exactly the same as a virtual machine, but you're not using the SSH, you're using the physical computer there. Because I'm using Ubuntu server, they will ask me to do exactly the same installation for any Ubuntu server. They will ask me to do all the setup, what will be not interesting in this video, but at least you have an idea. From now, you can start to do any configuration that you want. I will not show how to install Ubuntu because it's you only follow it step by step, but in this way you can start to install Ubuntu, you can start to install different systems, and if we come back here in my dashboard, my usage of a CPU is start to use. Because I define two cores and two threads, so they will get up to half of my usage and my RAM memory will be increased. So as I told, I will need to do everything for zero, set up everything, and this is not the point for this video. If you guys are not sure how to install Ubuntu server, please look for one of my previous videos when I show how to do it. If you're not sure what best system that you want to use for do the of application, leave a message and that I can suggest you what the best operating system for you. As I told in this video, I will show how you can configure it and install your virtual machine. We not go so in depth how you can create some application in this virtual machine because it's not the focus for this video. If you want to learn a little bit more how you can configure this one, look for my previous videos and that said they will show how you can install Debian, how you can install uh, Home Assistant supervised and other applications that will fit for your needs in this virtual machine. So, if you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you are not yet, and see you next time. Bye.